welcome back to the farmyard garden if you're new here my name is claire poly tunnel is looking amazing the winter hanging shelf has gone from the poly tunnel and i did take the advice of people to stow it up there to use it to tie the center supports to so i'm really pleased with how that's worked out it's you know solid enough to take the weight of all of these tomatoes in today's episode we're going to talk about the good and the bad of what's going on in the vegetable garden this june there's a lot of good things going on that I'm quite positive about, but there's some things that are a little bit disappointing. I'm not going to say failing because fingers crossed they're going to pick up because the weather's not been great, has it? We're going to start down the bottom end of the plot today with the onions. I thought these were going to be on the good list, but I have to say this last couple of weeks they've all started to bolt. So although they don't appear to be ready, I think it's probably time to harvest them before they sort of go all sort of woody and thick in the middle. Some of them are absolutely massive and I'm really, really pleased with them. But again, they've also bolted. Just to get the cover off and then I'll bring you in a little bit closer. There's quite a few weeds in here as well. But if I bring you closer now, you'll be able to see the good and the bad in here. Some of them are looking a pretty decent size. But a lot of them have bolted. Now I did cut the stems off. That's a bit guilty, should have probably let them go to seed. This is my first year growing onions, I've never grown them before. I have seen on social media that most of you have had problems with them sort of bolting and going to seed, so I don't think I'm alone in that one. But what I'm not quite sure about, because it seems a little bit conflicting, is whether you would try to keep these now or whether you would just chop them up and process them sort of into freezer bags to use during the year. So I'm going to harvest them and then I'm going to do a little bit of research when I get in. Now, I know I'm supposed to be disappointed that these have started bolting, but I can't help but look at them and think, look at the size of that onion and I grew it. So let's give them a harvest. Oh my life. I didn't expect them to be so hard to come up. They're sort of so, they're sitting on the surface so much. I didn't expect them to be so tricky to pull out. Look at that. I mean, it's only little and I've cut its flower stalk off, but does that not just look beautiful? Oh, look at that. I've been dreading pulling them, thinking that they'd all be rotten or something underneath, but... Look at that. Oh, it's quite soft on the neck, so does that mean it was nearly ready anyway? Because I haven't just done that. Wow. Oh, it's like a little workout to pull the leaf off that one. Oh, I'm so pleased with these so far. <laughs> Just like perfect little onions. Look at that. Smells nice too. Oh, look, I've just pulled the skin off accidentally. The first layer. Oh, look at that. Wow. It's a bit soft, that first layer, but the actual onion itself is really firm. So hopefully that's a sign that they're okay. Everyone warned me last year that the red onion sets would bolt. But you kind of have to learn that for yourself, don't you? I don't think I really understood what they meant when they said bolted last year anyway, but obviously I can see that now. Wow. It was so wet all winter, like over here it was underwater a lot of the time that I honestly expected these to all die. So, look at that. And then this is the final one. This is the one I'm calling my prize winning onion. Oh. There it is. Absolutely perfect onion. Look at it. Wow. The size of that. It's as big as my hands. Wow. Absolutely wow. Oh. 
I'm so thrilled with them. Can't even fit it in the basket. I had no idea they'd be so heavy. Wow, look at all of them. Definitely a good day. This bench is also good as well. Just give the bed a little rake over now and I will pull some of these weeds out. I can't get over how good that harvest was. It's the season of being rewarded for all of the efforts and hard work over winter for all of us now, hopefully. Although I know people are some people have been struggling with certain things. I know Rachel, our allotment plot, has really struggled with Ali and Leaf Miner. If you've been watching the channel for a while you'll know that I always said that I was going to be putting brassicas in these beds later on in the season. It seems pointless not to. The hoops are here, the Enviromesh is here, it's just made for brassicas. I did buy these red cabbages plug plants from the local garden centre. The variety is called Red Mars simply because the red cabbage that I've planted, one is not enough of them to make what my family wants which is the pickled red cabbage mainly. Also went to Gardeners World Live on the Sunday, had an absolutely amazing time there with my sister, met quite a few other YouTubers, so it was lovely to see Nanu and Grinch, I saw Nick from that British homestead, Jane from Jane's Growing Garden and the lovely Kerry from Dog on the Plot. Now me and Kerry engaged in a little bit of a plant swap, so poor Kerry's relatives had to have trays of pumpkins on their knees on the way home and Kerry gave me a tray of Rebecca and also some cabbages, which is absolutely perfect because now we're planting cabbages out. So I'm gonna get these planted in here, as many as I can fit. Then I'm gonna have a look to see what I'm going to do with these little onion sets here. A few of these are already starting to bolt. And what I'm thinking of doing is, is actually taking them up and putting them somewhere else on one of the gardens, not even in the vegetable plot, on the main garden, and letting them just run to seed and letting the pollinators enjoy them. And, maybe attracting pests to go that way instead of over here onto the plot. So these are golden acre cabbage that Kerry's given me. Thank you, Kerry. Just sort of plan out where they might fit in here. I don't think this is a full tray, actually. It might be. It might be better than I'm giving it credit for. That looks about right. We've planted a little bit of fish blood and bone in the hole. That was a lot of fish blood and bone in the hole, actually. Hope you don't mind adding that much. swapped for a trowel because I really don't like levering like this with a hori hori. I don't think you're supposed to. So because these are proper pots and not just little plugs. I don't want to risk breaking the hori. Blood and bone. Again, commending Kerry on her root growth here. Now, I don't think things are quite so good on this half of the bed. These were my spring sown onions and a lot of these have already gone to seed. 
taken the seed head off this one already. The shallots also went to seed, but I'm going to harvest them anyway. And they seem really well rooted. I'm not quite sure. Do you just pull them up as one? Oh, they're coming. Oh, there they go. I actually don't know how big shallots should be when you're growing them yourself. But that's those. These ones also went to seed and I took the head off and there was only two in there anyway. I don't know how big they should be, but they look all right anyway. I think I'm all set for onions for a few months. I'm gonna have a lot of processing of onions to do, but I'm quite pleased with those. And I was just thinking that I didn't have anything else to put in this bed and I was starting to think, oh, didn't do any succession sowing. But I do have something to put in here. I've just thought I have leeks. Now they're very, very tiny. They've really not done very much. But I think I'm just going to risk it and I'm going to plant them out in here and just see how they do. I'll just loosely mix this in a little bit and loosen the top surface. I'm probably breaking all manner of rules by putting these in here when it's just had onions in here. But hey ho! Oh. in a nice deep hole with the dither. These poor leeks have been pretty much tortured by having to stay in these little cells for so long. They're teeny tiny but they're perfectly formed and this variety is called Northern Lights. It's supposed to get purple foliage towards the end of the year. So I'll have to see if that works. Putting them in fairly deeply into the hole. I don't have bad little roots on for how small they are. These can definitely go in the category of good for today on the plot, can't they? So that side is all the northern light leeks and then here I'm going to do the Musselburgh leeks. Now I'm just going to pop these in as they are. They're all planted. I've left the Musselburgh ones kind of multi-sown at the moment because they're just so small. If I need to separate them out when they've grown on a little bit then I will do that. The Northern Lights are all as they were singularly sown. I'm just going to water them in now and get this cover back on. Let's carry on the allium theme to the next bed where I'm not sure that it's all going to be good yet. So this is the garlic and the shallot bed. Never grown garlic before either. So I've no real idea when to know whether it's ready to harvest. Now a lot of people have been already harvesting their garlic due to rust and as far as I can tell I don't have any rust on my garlic no doubt helps because obviously there's only me and my sister growing here so there's no other plots around and we've never grown garlic before but i don't think all is well in garlic land these do have some scapes on them now and i did watch a video that said to wait till the scape starts to curl and then it's kind of ready to harvest but what this garlic has been doing is something called witch's broom you see this is supposed to be a garlic and there's lots and lots of growth coming out of here I do still have a scape, but 
I believe this means it's probably not doing what it should do. I think the cloves will have split and started to regrow. So I think it's time to pull a few of these up and just see what we're dealing with. <gasps> wow. All oh, right, so I can definitely see that the bulbs are splitting. But to me, that's still garlic and I'm pretty certain it's going to be edible. So as you can see, as expected, it has all started to separate and grow. So you'll have to let me know, what is it I'm supposed to do with these now? Do I just plant them again? Surely not, it's too early. I'm guessing that I use these first. It smells lovely. Actually, it smells more like the horse garlic that we buy because they take garlic to ward off flies. Now that looks like a little clove, doesn't it? I don't know how big they should be, but I can feel that there's definitely split cloves in there. So I'm delighted with that. We don't actually eat much garlic here, so I didn't plant many. Oh, now this one, which is brooming, but look, it still stayed within its cover. So that one's okay, isn't it? Wow. Oh, I'm really, really excited by this. I've seen to have planted two cloves together here, which I hadn't realized until they'd gotten much bigger, but yeah, little cloves, but definitely garlic. And this one here. <laughs> So I'm actually really thrilled with them. I don't know whether I should be disappointed or not. So I'm just going to take the fact that I am thrilled with them because I don't know any different. And this is a benchmark for future years, isn't it? To see if it grows better or worse than this, obviously. But when I think about how waterlogged this plot was all winter, I expected all of these to be quite rotten. So I'm absolutely thrilled. That is definitely a good thing. Let's go ahead and harvest some more. Now these ones are quite a bit bigger. <gasps> Look at the size of that! Wow! Wow, wow, wow! So if those other ones were cork white, then by default this must be province white. And just look at the size of that! I can't believe I grew that! Look at that! I've got to show you this next one closer up. Oh my God, it's a monster. Oh my, look at the size of this one. It's nearly as big as my hand. It's absolutely huge. Wow, here was me expecting not to get any good results out of the garlic. And look at the size of that. Wow, absolutely over the moon with that. I just can't get over the absolute size of that. It's mammoth. Right, let's try this one here. Oh, this is more exciting than potatoes. And I thought that was good. Look at that. Wow. Oh, this is what you call beginner's look. This one's so tough. Oh. Oh. oh, this one isn't as big, but wow, it was strong. Wow. Oh, this one's not too bad either. And I thought this was going to be tiny because look how small the stem is. Wow. How big are you going to be? <laughs> Look at you! Oh, who knew I could be so excited to pick garlic? Look at that! Oh, you went in as deep, but another good one. There's no sign of any rot again on this. And I've only got a couple more left. Oh. Oh, I think this might be the other version. It's a different colour on the skin. But again, there's plenty of cloves in there. And this is the very last one here. Oh. <laughs> Look at that. Wow. Look at that. 
I can't stop looking at them. Absolutely thrilled. Aren't they brilliant? Wow, wow, wow. I didn't expect them to be that good. Garlic 2024 is a success, definitely on the good list. I was genuinely expecting this to be something that I was going to show you that was really, really bad. So I've surprised even myself. Oh, absolutely thrilled. Now what I have decided though is I'm not going to harvest the shallots that are in here at the moment. None of these have run to seed. They're all quite small considering they've been in here since October last year. I'm just going to leave them, see if they get any bigger. If they start putting up flower spikes then obviously I'll harvest them. But for now I think I've got more than enough onions and things to be getting on with. So I'm just going to shove the rake through it and put the cover back over and leave them for now. A cow shaped hole. I have now been told that I am the human gateway and make no mistake, I've been instructed that I must remain a closed gateway. No cattle are allowed through here. Even if my life depended on it, I must not move out of the way. Now, thankfully, they've moved out of the way, so neither my life is in danger nor my commitment to the task at hand. Me too much. Um, hey, go back. Go back. Go on. Go back. No flat packed mama. Me and my friend. I say friend. He's got his head down ready to bunt me. No bunting. Be nice. Yeah, I'm going to have blue marks on my coat now. I'll be good. Stay there this time. Next thing to harvest in these paper bags is here in the fruit cage. This is my strawberry patch. Now everyone's been posting videos and pictures of their strawberries being harvested and I felt a little bit behind but I've just seen something super exciting. Look at these hiding underneath these leaves and look at the size of this one. absolutely massive it's huge isn't it oh it smells so nice now i'm not going to eat these on camera because i know that's a little bit juicy i'm not going to do that to you pammy i'm just not going to do it to you but i really want to oh wow let's see if there's any more hiding oh there looks like there's one i've missed there that's gone rotten Oh, I was not keeping my eye on the ball. Mm, that's definitely bad. That looks like that would have been a big strawberry as well. Seek and ye shall find. Oh, here's another one. Oh, look at that. A perfect heart shape. This variety of strawberry is actually called Sweetheart. So to get one that is such a heart shape. Absolutely brilliant. I bought these from More Berries. Oh, there might be. One in here. Oh, this is a whopper too. <laughs> wow. While we're in the fruit cage, one of the things that isn't doing very well are the Cape gooseberries that are planted outside. The ones in the polyton will look a lot happier. It's just been so cold overnight, hasn't it? Now with the forecast improving, as I've already mentioned, hopefully these will pick up. They're still flowering, they're still setting fruit, but they have really been struggling. The harvest bench is filling up. But now it is really time to show you the bad things that are going on in the garden. Although they're not actually on the plot at the moment, the bad things are in the main garden. And we'll start off in the greenhouse because I have a little bit of a rescue job to do tomorrow on the aubergines. On a quick look, it probably just looks like these aubergines need a bit of a water and they do dry out quickly, I'll give you that. This one here is actually producing its first aubergine. 
this is the F1 pinstripe but the real problem is this plant here and if I just take one of the leaves off to show you because the leaves are dying back I don't know whether this is the start of red spider mite or aphids because I really don't know what the difference is so I would absolutely love it if you could give me a little bit of advice there the leaves feel a bit sticky to touch it's not looking great is it and I do have all of my chilies in here so I'm a little bit worried I do have neem oil and I do have horticultural soap arriving tomorrow but I think I'm going to take this particular plant outside of here and give it a bit of a blast off with a hose for tonight and then see about treating it tomorrow now looking under the leaves of these other ones they are not affected at all it is just that one and these two are the same variety so it's not that they're preferring a particular variety the other thing not doing so well are the greek gigantes i mean they are growing up above it a little bit but they're looking a little bit poor aren't they they have been completely decimated by slugs and what does worry me is the fact that the grass mulched potatoes are next to here so i'm going to hazard a guess that the potatoes growing in here if there are any growing in here are probably going to also be affected by slugs now it doesn't get any better on this garden because if you watched my last video you'll remember just how good my sister's sweet corn looked and i said mine was pathetic by comparison but i didn't show it to you well now it's time to show it to you it's called early riser it's not doing much rising is it and certainly not very early well, hmm, it's hanging in there but it's looking pretty ropey this bed had plenty of fertilizer in it over winter it has been mulched with some really good quality compost as well on top and i put chicken pellets and fish blood and bone in there when i planted them i have to say it doesn't look as bad as it did a week or two ago but it's still not looking great is it so i am just hoping that now the weather has slightly warmed up overnight for the next couple of weeks that hopefully this will get a good hold in the ground and just pick up and hopefully catch up really i didn't plant it till quite late last year and i got a good crop towards the end of the year they were small cobs but they were absolutely beautiful cobs so fingers crossed it does catch up now i get quite a few comments from peers and also on youtube or instagram that the plot is really tidy and organized well not everywhere in the garden is tidy and organized and i do kind of scurry past this really embarrassing part of the garden but i'm going to show it you now there you go messy corner so that's the way i walk out across to the plot through that gateway and that is messy corner and obviously with the wet warm weather messy corner is getting even more messy than normal but there's all this cleavers that is obviously going to go to seed soon the concrete here is from the old greenhouse base and Duncan moved it here with the mini digger but he needs to come in with the telehandler to be able to actually shift it out of the garden properly and unfortunately the weather has been such that it's just not dry enough on the garden to drive the telehandler across without causing quite a lot of damage to the lawn so that's why it's still here and that is also why all of the weeds have grown up around it but the other embarrassing thing, if I spin the camera around, you'll also remember where the greenhouse used to be. We had a bare area of soil ready for me to sow some seed. Didn't get around to sowing some seed, but look at all the weeds that have grown here instead. So now we have a, a weedy wild meadow there instead. So that needs sorting out and the seed that I've had for weeks actually does need sowing on this spot. Now enough of seeing the negative, I've decided that I'm going to take some of these sweet peas in the house because obviously you are supposed to keep picking them to make them keep flowering. Look at that, aren't they absolutely gorgeous? I've never grown sweet peas before either. Seems to be a recurring theme, doesn't it? I've never grown it before, but I'm so glad I chose to grow them this year. I'll catch you in the next video. Look after yourself. Bye.